hi everyone <laughs> you're welcome to today's video it's quite an unusual video because um lying down i'm in my daughter's nursery i actually planned to film today so i was already dressed for the filming but she wants my attention so i'm here in a nursery giving her some time i just feel to put up my phone and just quickly do this before i film the main video when i actually get the time to do so Yes, okay, let me introduce myself. I'm Sharon Aditola, if you are new to my channel, also known as Sharoni, and I'm so delighted to have you stop by my channel today. What I quickly want to talk about um, is something that happened when I went out on a walk to the park with my daughter yesterday. We would usually go to the park because um, it's quite close to our house. It's a really big park, so um, I would always want her to get fresh air and also... For myself take some steps and try to lose some weight so we went to the park and everything was fine i even branched at the grocery stores before grocery store before going off to the park and she had slept off by the time i go to the park she was still sleeping but before we left home usually when i put her in a stroller she's always laid flat on her chest and she would be um facing me so i told her that that okay since she's quite active than before now i think we should prop her up a little and have her face forward so that she's able to look around and just you know why we go out and just see stuff and he agreed and that was the way we set our stroller so she was facing forward i did not know that that was going to backfire <laughs> so she was facing forward and we're going you know she was sleeping at the moment she woke up at some point i felt like using the restroom so i used the restroom at the park as soon as i entered the restroom she woke up so you know upon waking up and she didn't see me and she felt she was alone she was already crying so i was screaming i'm here i'm here then she kept quiet so we came out and i continued walking everything was fine she was still you know looking around i was watching her through um a transparent place above her bassinet so yes so she was um looking around at some point i realized she was coughing you know she was choking actually so i quickly brought her out of the stroller and i was trying to make her feel better as soon as i brought her out she did her mouth in a way like she wanted to cry there's a way babies do their mouth she was like so i was wondering why she wanted to cry because she ate before we left to my made sure her tummy was full that was that's what i always do so she ate before leaving home so right after eating she bopped and you know why we stay walking she slept so i was wondering what was going on so I thought it was just going to be a small cry or something, but brethren, hmm, she was crying, she was screaming her lungs out, and the park is a very quiet place. There were a lot of mothers there also strolling around. I usually see them there strolling during the day with their babies. Some would just sit reading, some knitting. It's just a place like I see a lot of moms come, not only moms, but I see a lot of moms always come there to relax. <laughs> She was crying. My daughter cries in soprano, like high pitched. She was screaming. I was discombobulated, trust me, because I was wondering what could be going on. And okay, the first thing that hit me was why is she crying? Like, what's happening? She ate before leaving home. So, what could be going on? And another thing that wanted to throw me off balance was the fact that I was there alone with her, and there were a lot of people, not so many, but there were people at the park. Like, that just came to relax and enjoy the quietness and, you know, we're here screaming, you know. So, that wanted to throw me off balance. But immediately, I had to, like, reorder my thinking. And I said, okay, it's not going to be about people. Something is going on with my daughter. I need to attend to her and not be carried away by what people will think because we're in the park and she was screaming. And at the point my, I took my mind to that place, I became calm. Because I realized that if I made it more about what people would think or people, or people putting attention on us, it was going to stress me out all the more and I was going to be more confused. So I had to immediately take that out of my mind. And how I remember that was that we traveled recently with her. It was our first time flying. And before we left home, my husband and I agreed that this is our first time flying. We don't know how it would be for her. But whatever happens on the plane, even if she cries or she screams or anything... We were not going to think about what people would think of us. We we're going to concentrate on her and make her feel better because we, we realized that that was how it's going to help us to be less stressed. And luckily for us, on the journey to and fro, she didn't cry. There was no drama. She was very peaceful. Like It was a very sweet experience. Like She was really enjoying herself. So we didn't get to do that. But now 
this was happening at the park. I had to remember the discussion I had with my husband before we flew. I said, okay, well, I'm going to concentrate on this child now. I know okay, people can be dis like, um, people can feel somehow that, oh, I came here to enjoy myself and maybe he's screaming and all that. I know how very annoying it can be. And really, it's not like I don't care about people. What, or you do get, I understand if people feel angry and all that. But this is a child. I don't know what is wrong with her. The truth is that she is distressed and she needs me to help her calm down. So I have to focus on her and help her calm down, you know. So I focused on her and, you know, people were passing and they were staring. They were looking at me. <laughs> Other mothers too were passing in their stroller and just giving me that stare. But I didn't mind. I, was, I told myself, no, I'm not going to be carried away. My daughter needs me now and I just need to make her feel better and at that point i became so calm so i realized like the lessons i learned i realized that at moments like that when your child is distressed they need you they need you to they're already distressed they don't need you to be distressed as well if anything if a child is distressed the parents should be calm because it's when you are calm you can handle the situation better she cried for really long at some point i was dancing and pacing and i had to call her dad i thought that seeing her dad on phone would make her calm she saw him, she was sick, so I told him to just please come with food because I just felt food could have, like she could have been hungry. I was trying to breastfeed her, but she had already cried to the point where she was really angry. So she was just screaming and, you know, she was very implacable. So her dad was on his way. While he was on his way, I did everything at some point. She said to breastfeed and she became calm, but at another point she was screaming. I really did not, couldn't lay hold on what exactly it was, but I just felt it was food because I just felt... A diaper was not wet. I changed that before we left home. Everything was in order. So I just, um, probably she got hungry again. So at the point where children are distressed, like I'm not giving you parenting hack here. I'm, I'm a newbie on it. I'm just sharing lessons I learned from this experience. Like at the point where your children are distressed or they are throwing a tantrum, if a child is throwing a tantrum and a child is doing all that in public, let's say a baby. Now, even toddlers, if they do stuff like this in public, the first thing that hits your mind as a parent, if you are not careful, is people. And it's not about people. And the reason you get stressed when things like that happen in public is not really, um, it's not really about the child. It's more, I realize that many times it's more about what people will think. And if you come from Africa or Nigeria where people don't, do not mind their businesses when it comes to your children, like people can begin to say, attend to that child now, take care of that child, what's going on, what are you doing to the child? You know, people can begin to do that and that can stress you out. But if you're in that situation, just disconnect from people, focus on the child and try to do everything to make the child better and do not bother about people. People would always be fine. Nobody has ever dropped down dead because a child was crying in public. Nobody has ever gotten a stroke or heart attack because a child was crying in public. So people would be fine. The best thing is just to concentrate on the child and make the child feel better. And that was what I did yesterday. And it really helped me. It made me calm. It made me in control. And it made me, it made me just in control because as much as she didn't want to keep quiet, I felt in control and I wasn't, but I wasn't stressed. I wasn't, if I was bothering about people, I'd be stressed, I'd be jittery and all that. So sometimes the reason why you feel your children are stressing you out, is not really because they are stressing you out. Children would always be children. That is it. There are things children would always do. It's not actually because they want to stress you out. The reason you might be stressed out might be because you are more bothered about people's opinions, how people would view you, people putting attention on you, especially when you're in public. So that was one thing I learned myself. Like nobody gave me that arc. I learned it myself. That was the first lesson I learned. Another lesson I learned from the experience is never to compare my daughter or her situation with anyone's own. It's a decision I made even before I had kids that I'm never going to compare my children <laughs> with anyone. It was easy for me to have compared her with other babies like other babies are quiet in this park. Why is she crying and all that? I wasn't going to do that. If other babies want to be quiet and she chooses to scream her lungs out well, that's uh, that's unique to her. And she's actually a very peaceful child. She doesn't cry. If there's nothing she needs, she doesn't force. There are times she wakes up in the mornings and she's already awake and she'll just lay there in her bassinet looking. So I'm always checking her up in the morning to know when she's awake because sometimes Sometimes she cries when she wakes up, but some other times she wakes up and she's not even crying. She's not calling for her attention. But immediately she sees me, she'll now begin to smile. So for me, it was my first test in that my decision not never to compare or compare my children with anyone. So I wasn't going to compare. I was going to focus on her and help out. The second lesson I learned is actually with God. You know, taking care of my daughter has helped me to understand God in very 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 many ways it's quite amazing but what came to my mind is as i was holding her in my hands and trying to pacify her not caring about people 
I it hit me that this is how we are in the hands of God. You know, when we are in the hands of God, we can be anything we want to be. We can do anything we want to do. We can be naked and not ashamed. The reason why she could do that with me is because she's used to me and my mom, so she can afford to do that with me. Sorry, darling. So when we when we're in the hands of God, we can be anything we want to be. People can be looking at us and be like, "What's wrong with this person?" But you know, God isn't bothered what people think about us. God is more like, this is my child. She's in my hands. I'm in control here. Just the way I was in control with my daughter. God is just going to be like, I'm in control. She's in my hands. He's in my hands. I know what to do with this child. So people can complain about you, about your childishness, about something that is going on in your life, about a season you are going through and all that. But as long as you're in God's hands, God isn't bothered. God isn't worried because God knows how to fix you. Just like, as I knew how to fix my daughter yesterday, eventually her dad came with food and it was hunger so my mistake was that even if i fed her before we leave i mean i feed her before we leave home i should still take some food along when i'm going out with her as soon as her dad came and she ate she was fine she was even playing do you get so god knows how to fix us he knows where to meet us at the point of our needs so we can just be if we can be a baby in his hands just when my daughter was a baby in my hands and our needs were met if you can be a baby in god's hands God just knows how to fix every one of his children. So people can say whatever they want to say about you. They may not understand, but you are in the hands of somebody who understands, who is not bothered about people. So if people, if God is not bothered about what people will think, then I don't think we all should be bothered about what people will think. Just be a baby in God's hands. He has got everything in control and do not concentrate on people. You see, but the, the more I'm growing in God, the more I realize that, that People are not the main thing. In fact, many times people are not the concentration. It's more about God and me. So people may not understand your dealings with God, but you are in God's hands. He understands and he has everything in control. They can judge you, but you're in the hands of somebody who understands. And so far, he doesn't care about what people think. Then there's no reason why you should care or be bothered. Yeah, so these are the lessons I learned yesterday from the experience with my daughter at the park yesterday as i'm speaking if there's anything you want to draw my attention to that you feel is a lesson from this experience as well you can let me know in the comment section thank you i believe it has blessed you in one way or the other if it has please share it and also don't forget to like this video if it has blessed you subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't yet done so and um Turn on the notification bell. That was what I wanted to remember. Turn on the notification bell so I get to know every time I drop a new video. Thanks so much for watching this video till the end and till you see me again because I usually say till I see you again, but I don't get to see you. You're the ones who see me. Okay. In another well, thank video. Thank you for watching today's Bye. video. Um, but before you go, I would like to call your attention to something, something very important, something very crucial. In fact, it's the most important thing in life. And that is the state of your soul. Are you born again? Have you given your heart to Jesus? The Bible says that what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Like what would a man give in exchange for his soul? God doesn't want anyone to perish. This was why he sent Jesus to come and die for our sins so that by the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary, we all can be forever saved from eternal doom and damnation in hell forever. Nobody has to go through the flames of hell. Nobody has to go through the punishment of eternal separation from God. Jesus has already paid the price. All we need to do is to identify with what Jesus has done at Calvary and believe in our hearts that he died for our sins and he rose up again for our justification. And we are saved. You know, Jesus is standing today. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Please open up to him. Tomorrow might be too late. Heaven is real and hell is real. Open up to Jesus today and let him save you. Let him deliver you from a life of struggle, from a godless life, from a godless existence and from eternal damnation in hell. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you've been struggling with your work with God or you know that you are living a life that is not pleasing to God. Please pray this prayer with me and mean this prayer from your heart because God is listening to you and this prayer is going to change the whole course of your life and eternity forever. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your sacrifice for me at Calvary. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose up again for my justification. Today I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. 
I ask that you cleanse me from every iniquity, from every unrighteousness. Dear Lord Jesus, today I receive your love for me and I declare that I'm born again. Grant me a fresh new start and a brand new life in you. Thank you because I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, congratulations. You've made the best decision ever in life. I would like to welcome you to God's big, beautiful family. And I would advise that you identify with a local assembly so that you can grow in your work with God. Ask God to lead you to the right place where his true word is being preached. And I believe that if you pray that, God is going to lead you to the right place. And I connect faith with yours that God would actually lead you to the right place. When you get to this local assembly, let them know that you just gave your life to Jesus and they'll take it up from there. Apply every teaching that you are going to be um, you are going to be taught and everything you are going to be told. And I wish you all the best in your journey of faith. I pray for every one of us that God will grant us the grace to remain firm and steadfast till we see Jesus face to face. Amen.